We are J and J. He's Justin. He's Jared. Two leash dads that get together to discuss their everyday lives while chained to their responsibilities, like taking care of our families and also trying to find the perfect dad hobby to keep us from going insane, which is a difficult task, by the way. Difficult? What do you mean difficult? I don't know. I said to my wife the other day, I said, you know what I miss about being a kid? Just the my imagination. I had a hell of an imagination when I was growing up, and I don't have that anymore, and it sucks because I can't oh. play with my kids. That sounds like a personal problem. Hey, by the way, we also do have another guest tonight, Shantae. She will be performing the hobbies from a mother's perspective, so <laughs> it'll be... It's not just dad hobbies, but also mom hobbies. Busy moms, busy dads, whatnot. Hello, Shantae. Hi. So tonight we are leashed parents, not yes. just leashed dads. Yes, leashed parents is very critical. <laughs> yes. So when uh, we had Matt, he was you know kind of an uncle figure, and Jane. Then we had a teacher she did figure. Not have any kids, but she was a teacher. Which is like having kids. You have kids eight hours a day and send them back to their parents. I mean, you're like, a you're like a glorified of going here, have them back. <laughs> yeah, you're gl- you're a glorified babysitter <laughs> at that point. <laughs> so, hey, I did also want to say that uh, thank you to everybody out there. We actually hit uh, actually a little over a hundred viewers slash listeners across our thirteen episodes and one preview video. So, thank you very much. It means a lot. Um, to us as a passion project slash really wanted to get this taken off. So uh, stay, stay stay tuned for more fun updates like that. And we might even try to do like a live episode. Like Jared and I are actually next to each other in person. Holy crap, crazy. <laughs> anyway. Eating hot sauces. Yeah. No way the, hot <laughs> the hot wings episodes. The hot wings episodes. The Hot Dads yeah. episodes, that's what it's going to be called. <laughs> if that happens, I'm hot. definitely watching. <laughs> hot Dad oh, Bods. happening. I have the sauces in my fridge right now. So. Yep. He does. So, yeah. With, with that being said, weeks are crazy. You know, we're already in February. Can you believe that? Ugh. It's gone really no. fast. <sighs> January is gone. February is here. Two weeks from now, you're looking at Valentine's Day. Holy crap. But, you know, it's, like I said, it's been really crazy here. Um, you know, over the week, I picked up on strep. <laughs> sucks. My life sucked. I, as soon as I uh, figured I was getting sick, it was uh, I was falling asleep at like 9 o'clock at night on a day. And I went into the doctor immediately because I'm like, if this is strep, I want to get this handled. Um, because I don't want to feel like crap. And my kids have already had it. I don't want to give it back to them. Um, but then I also had, like, my son, my eldest son's music concert. Fourth or sixth grade music concert where fourth graders performed, fifth graders, then sixth graders. And then at the end, they all came together and performed. I'm surprised they only have, like, two classes, like, two fourth grade classes. So it looked very small in comparison to what I thought would be, you know, a bigger concert. Maybe that's because I'm used to, like, high school concerts. Um right. <laughs> so it's it's very crazy. And then lastly, there was something um I finally never thought I was actually going to win. Uh free vacation to the Bahamas. That's going to be fun. What? Yeah, I'm take in I have like over 18 months to plan uh my vacation to the Bahamas here. So it's probably going to be sometime after Eleonora is old enough for we can just have them go <laughs> like have the kids be watched by like grandparents or somebody willing to watch our kids for basically an entire week while we're enjoying some vacation time. So That's gonna it'll, be awesome. it'll be fun. Yeah. Be and then sick. kids always wake up early, so it sucks. It sucks my morning away. Yeah. But yeah, the Bahamas is actually very exciting. The only, it's actually like a free vacation that I won uh, back in January. Um, while I was cr- doing some Christmas shopping, I just threw my name in with my information and somehow magically got picked. Um, 
So it's great. I was like, I'm just going to do it because I'm not actually going to get picked to be one of the winners. That's just my luck. But apparently right. my luck is the other the way around. Way. <laughs> it's the other way. So That's I'm actually awesome, very, man. I'm very excited. Sam and I are very excited. It'll be something that we finally can do as a couple and get away from our everyday lives. But, wow. Yeah. Do you know so. where exactly in uh, the Bahamas? Uh, so we get like three cho- three choices to or like hotels to pick from, and it's like the um, God I I have I have the account and everything that I could log into, but I it's just three different locations that we can pick from and based on what we're okay. looking to do and whatnot. So it'll be a good time, and the best part is yeah I don't need a passport. Nice. It's crazy. <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of taken by that. So yeah, how was how was everybody else's week? I mean, Jared, Chante, start. One of you two. Uh, I'll go. Uh, it was it was pretty crazy. As I kind of made the conclusion uh, again, I talked to I talked to my wife often because she's the only person I talk to. But uh, I looked up at the full moon today in the parking lot of Walmart and just like, that's why this week was just insane. It was right before a full moon. That that makes sense because that seems to happen all the time. But uh, you know, it, end of the month for me is just crazy uh with getting either the you know first of the month renewals all set up and for those of you don't know i work in commercial insurance so all their renewals either happen at the end of the month or the first of the month and then there are some stragglers that are in between but um anytime that it's the end of the month uh jared's gonna be just crying in tears by the end of the day so end of the week uh, but I took some time during this week to get my taxes all set and done. As soon as Lucky. I got my W two, I was like, boop, boop, done. I gotta get this, gotta get this taken care of, because mm-hmm. otherwise it'd be uh, March, and you know, should probably get to that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I would love to get my taxes done, but we're, Sam and I are still waiting on some uh, additional information that uh, we can't do yet, or we can't fill. I okay. uh, can't fill our taxes out until we get it. Uh, mm. You know, All right, well. baby, baby needs some numbers. Baby needs an ID number. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important. Because she was born like she was born at December, the end of the year, right? so, basically. Yeah, yeah. So. Need her soul. Sh- the minute yep. our W twos came in, I was like, "That's it. I'm getting them done, or I will forget." <laughs> Man, yep. you're lucky. We're not. We haven't forgotten. We just can't do it yet. Mm. That's all. <laughs> so. Because you had a baby in December. Yeah. Right. And- <laughs> For some reason, our, I, you know, I, I ha, it's a love hate relationship with the government, mostly hate, but it's they're just struggling with getting that social. So, yeah. So, uh, got yeah, got the taxes done, and then uh, my wife and I and the kids are going to sign up for a YMCA membership, hopefully coming up here soon. Uh, and then we also had a discussion about just living our lives. You know, we spend a lot of time watching movies on the couch and well, that's not bad. It's also not good because the past month, our kids have just been bouncing off the freaking walls and you know, we just said they need to get out of the house. This, you know, this is not a big house. They need some sort of activity to do. So why not sign up for some gym with a pool and just get them out of the house and, and run some energy off. So that's where the YMCA thing came out and just um, planning more vacations. And even though it might not be a big vacation, it's, you know, just a weekend away, mm-hmm. uh, maybe to Green Bay or something like that. It's, you know, just, just to get out of the house. Um, so we're going to start planning stuff like that. Uh, but, of course, need to be back uh, Sunday nights at nine o'clock. So don't worry. I'll, yeah. I'll still be here for you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> He's not going anywhere yet. <laughs> no, not, no, no, no. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a big discussion. It was real uh, epiphany for us both. Um, and then also, you know, with the taxes on time and like right on, right after getting the W two, uh, we you know need to stop procrastination. Procrastination has run my life since high school. I've always been the one to do a five-page paper three hours before it's due, and that always turned it up. Well, usually it turned bad because I usually got like a C or some shit, but um, <laughs> nine times out of ten, I, I, I was able to 
buckle down and uh, not wait till the last minute. So just trying to work on procrastination this week. Uh, and then, I don't know, Natalie had uh, a family day in Racine yesterday, so it was just me and the girls, and we went out to my parents to drop some cardboard off. My city uh, and the recycling is insane. We huh. have to fit everything in two bins. I don't know what it's like for you two, but... We have. There's nothing can be outside the bins. Nothing. You got like small ass and, bins then, or is it like a well, they're big? Not, I mean, they're not small, but like our recycling is every other week. Mm. Yeah, so is ours. So it like accumulates pretty fast. And then there's no room for boxes. Mm. Amazon boxes. Break mm-hmm. them down. Even broken down, they take up a lot of space. I know. Holy I crap, have a what problem. are you guys doing, like, ordering big-ass things? I have a problem. We're going to leave it at that. Oh, yeah, fair. <laughs> I know. My wife's got a problem, too, but we're able to make everything fit, even though, yeah. yeah. I know how to it's make, old. I know how to stuff a <laughs> freaking recycling bin full of boxes and other shit. Well, my so. problem is, is not only do I have the Amazon boxes, I have the Chewy boxes for my dog as well. So... Oh mm-hmm. yeah, you and your little, you and your puppy. About to be two puppies this next week. I'm so excited. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, well, Shantae. And, and that, you know, you break down your your week. So you got a puppy coming next week? Yes, this coming Friday I get my puppy, which is going to be another Siberian Husky, which I'm so excited for. Oh, jealous. And uh, Kind of. It, it, they're both loud. It's It'll be fine. <laughs> I live in a house full of girls. It'll be fine. Everything's loud and argumentative, so it fits right in for me. So, is this husky? Uh, is this new puppy going to be a female or a male? I. It's gonna be a boy. I'm just gonna have a boy. boys. I have okay. enough females in my house. I am. I am set. I just had to make sure your husband was getting enough males and or enough testosterone in the house too oh, to even out the females. Oh, he's had it up to here with all the girl drama. He's done. <laughs> He's done. He doesn't care anymore. He's done. Yeah. This, this, this past <laughs> week has been just extra with these girls in my house. Same. Oh, my God. Like, what is going on? I don't know. Hey, you guys have... I, I think I have it better right now because <laughs> I have all the testosterone in the house compared to the <laughs> estrogen going running rampant. I mean, okay... Jared's case right now, they're, you know, his daughters are still young, where there's not like a high amount of estrogen and manipulation going on. Oh, <laughs> right there. Okay, yeah, so that starts to, young with girls when it comes to manipulating people around them. They learn that skill very early on. It's just innate, I swear. Mm-hmm. But my oldest yeah, is a middle a... schooler, and that is a whole other level of drama. Oh, and just drama. I was telling you about it a little bit before we got mm-hmm. all together. It's just, I'm over it. I'm over it. This is why I had yeah. male friends in school. <laughs> <laughs> she was the only female in a male <laughs> society. <laughs> Sometimes it was just easier because I could argue with them and they'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever, shut up. <laughs> yeah. And it was over. Nope. I think a lot of females see it that way, though, too. Or women like to look at it, though. It's like, I'd rather be in a group of men. Yeah. Just because not so much drama. And if you guys argue, once that argument's done, it usually stops there. Usually. (laughs) Jared, you're just sitting there laughing away. (laughs) What, were you the opposite? I'm the only male in a female group? God, that'd be hell. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I had mostly female friends because I hate sports, so, and that's all they talked about in high school. I, that's true, that is very true. I love true. sports, so it worked out for me. Yeah. There you go. I'm a mix. I'll do, I like, I like my sports, I like my game, or video games, I like, you know, just a little bit of everything. I probably could have been one of those kids in high school that fit into almost every single click. That um, was me. I just kind of roamed. I didn't really stay in one spot. I didn't. I didn't necessarily roam. I just could have probably fit into every a different cliques if I really wanted to. Just kind of try to be more sociable. But I was. I put myself in the outcast set group. 
which is a shame, but it is what it is. So, um, <laughs> let's just say it drove, it, I wouldn't say that drove me insane or anything. Um, what drives me insane nowadays is really trying to find something that I can stick to. And thankfully we have this podcast. Yeah. I'd consider this podcast like a hobby that's keeping me from going insane every single week. <laughs> So, it, it's one of, it's one of those things, but no, let's let's talk about some hobbies that we can all think about that might actually be useful to moms and dads out there. Um, that can be easy to pick up on. You don't have to necessarily be like and s- stress over, because I think people when they try to think of a hobby, they start stressing <coughs> over things they need to, mm-hmm. um, and I think some of these 12 hobbies that we actually have here that we're going to just kind of go through are actually going to be very nice and easy. You don't have to go spend boatloads of money on, on this stuff, um, to start this hobby. It, again, what is a hobby? It's something you can do on your leisure time. Can, you know, continuously do on your leisure time. Whereas some other things you're maybe doing regularly or, um, always making it something scheduled so uh yeah let's you know let's kind of look at some of these hobbies um again we do have 12 of them and i think there are some that i think there might be one in here that disagreeable but at the same time maybe from a different perspective all right uh number one i think is easy photography Uh, we've also got whip up a meal reading getting fit blogging, video games, making something with your hands or like a, you know, do it yourself kind of project, puzzles, play a musical instrument, learn a language, cultivate a green thumb, and last but not least, origami. Hmm. So those are the 12 things. I mean, what are what are some thoughts on just the list itself? It's a pretty basic list for just kind of all around things that anybody can do. All right. Yeah. Jared? Yeah. I don't think this list is specifically to dads. I mean, it can be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I certainly agree with that. It's, you know, anybody can do it, I think. It's just one of those things that it was probably written by a dad for dads, um, thinking these are some of the easiest things to pick up. But again, like I said, it could be for, you know, it could be for anybody, um, especially even moms too, right? Yeah. Obviously. Uh, so, what I want you two to tell me: what is um, which hobby do you find the most attractive, or something you would actually want to pick up on off of this list? Reading was on there, right? Yeah, reading was on there. That's me. <laughs> okay, let, you have to pick a different hobby since you already do that enough. Um, I would have to say whipping up a new type of meal. I do like to cook, so I could. That would probably be one that I would try. Okay, so being, are you adventurous when it comes to cooking, then, or? I am. I like to try foods from different cultures and see. Like mm-hmm. how it tastes and stuff. So, so have you ever made curry? I mean, I have. I know not. I made curry tonight. I have not. I've done stir fry. I've made. Um, I love Mexican food, so I've made a lot of different kinds of Mexican food. That is just so delicious. Hmm. Um, nice. I haven't. I haven't really made a Mexican dish myself. Um, but tonight we definitely Sam and I decided to try something different, which was. I'm sorry, my kids are singing in the background from their room. I thought it was... As long as you're singing and not, like, murdering each other. That's, that's I thought it was my... Honestly, that's I thought it was my I kids. That's why I stopped for a second. I was like, <laughs> is it singing? Is it fighting? And they're they're off-key singing. Rihanna, it's... <laughs> oh, God. Oh. There's a hobby, getting into singing. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's really a hobby. That's something you have to really invest time into. <laughs> I mean, it can be a hobby even if it's not, like, the greatest of quality. If you like singing, even yeah. if you sound 
to other people like you might be dying on the side of the road it's still fun for you <laughs> do it have fun yeah no so with with your cooking then do mm-hmm. you allow i mean since you like to cook mm-hmm. do you actually have other people help you uh it's debatable it depends on my mood of the day <laughs> if i will oh, allow okay. other so, people to help me right. <laughs> So after a long, hard day of work, you like to go to B-dubs and be like, ah, I'll, I'll let these people cook for me. There's time. <laughs> uh, me and my husband, we, we split it up. I cook more in the kitchen, and that is my domain for and cooking. And he's on the and grill? He's the grill master. Like, he, that is him. He'll go right. watch this for me, and I'm like, sure. Let's see <laughs> if I not burn this today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Jared, what about you? What what's your uh what would be the hobby you find most attractive or would be willing to pick up on? You know, gosh darn it, it's hard because there are several on here that I'd like to get into. But I guess if I had to pick one and I'm already doing the reading part, so I'm gonna go with cultivating a green thumb because I don't know. You kind of have to have the touch for that stuff. And uh, I'd like to start, you know, planting stuff, and veg- veggies and all that. I don't know. Okay, so you would be looking more at, like, doing an herb garden and actually having to maintain that? <coughs> Versus, like, maybe you just plant some bushes that you can take care of year-round or um, maybe not so much year-round here because Wisconsin is just, <laughs> you know brutal during three like three to four months at a t- out of a year so you know most of your plants are basically dead at that point but like you know I, I i can't consider myself with the green thumb yes i have plants around my house but i take care of those through like spring through fall and then once winter hits you know i don't do anything with them because they're gone they're hidden by the snow um but we don't i don't i don't do any like that actual herb or like veggie type of gardening um, I know some people that do, and my I think it's very interesting. My mom's entire house is plants. She's got succulents, she's got spider plants, she's got all these different kind of plants, and I'm like, I'll kill them. Don't give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, succulents, I think, are like the easiest thing to take care of. So My mom gave me a jade plant, and she's like, when it wrinkles, water it. Other than that, don't touch it. I was like... Cool, because I'll forget about it anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so the herb gardening, huh? You would actually gonna dive into that, or is it going to help you with some other thing that you like to do? Uh, mainly just vegetables. I don't really okay. want to grow things so they look good. I just want them to be functional, you know. Makes sense. Functional, herbs, yeah. and then you can even use them to eat. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, having your own basil would be nice. Because it's so freaking expensive. Basil, yeah, rosemary, get... all of those are just getting outrageously expensive. Fresh, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, but they're also trying to. I think they're more expensive because they're organic. They're not necessarily ge- genetically modified, right? Most of the time now. Most of the time. I don't. I don't know. I haven't been to like. I don't necessarily go pick up on those seasonings or herbs all the time either. I shouldn't call them seasons. They're not seasons. <laughs> they are just herbs that people make or mass produce and then put in a store and say here sell them uh. right because i love pesto i love making pesto i love eating pesto okay but buying the basil to make the pesto is just it, it, you might as well try to find a way to make it yourself or try to hmm. find a way to get basil from somebody who grows it wow yeah garlic's I getting agree. really expensive too and i put garlic in everything yeah huh. it is must make, must make everything garlicky. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I couldn't think of a good joke for garlic. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good for you. At least you repel the vampires. Well, and like, well, one thing I really like about garlic is like, if you ferment it in honey, it's supposed to be like an amazing like cure for like colds. Never yeah, heard, that. I heard that. I that. Yeah, in fact, my wife makes this this drink when I'm have a cold or I'm sick. It's Garlic, honey, lemon, and apple cider vinegar in boiling water. Ooh, that's it's nice. it's better than a hot toddy. I swear to God. 
Nice. That so sounds delicious. I'll be honest. Oh, okay. great. So, if we look at it from my perspective, then. I can't touch video games, because I already do enough of that as it is. Um, I... Which one would I really want to get into? Hmm. Well, I'm already doing a couple things. I'm already playing video games. I'm already learning a language. Ooh, what language? Oh, that's right. How's that going? Uh, it's going. I'm on. I was. Uh, I'm on like a hundred and fifty some days streak right now. So it's not too bad. Nice. Um, and I'm learning. I'm learning French or relearning French in a sense. Okay. Um, as I did take French back in high school or like mm -hmm. middle school and high school. Uh, so I'm actually trying to relearn it, uh, obviously at my own pace, right. um, where, you know, I can just simply do it for about 15 or like five minutes a day or 15 minutes a day to be really effective. Um, and I do use Duolingo. So shout out to Duolingo. Uh, it's actually, I would say it's a great app uh, for learning it. I know there's some other ones like Babbel and things, but Duolingo, it's, fr it's a free app where you don't have to pay for a subscription. If you want, you certainly can. Uh, you know, pay for it, but pretty much free to, free to go. Um, I want to, hmm, I don't know if I could do that, but musical instrument is still attractive to me. I love you did music. that though, didn't you? I did it, but it wasn't for like a hobby. <laughs> I mean, I guess at one point I, I was doing it for school, um, but I think it would be fun to get back into it just to pull out like a trumpet or something like that every so often and just look at sheets of music and start playing them again. My lips would probably be very, very sore uh, and exhausted from yeah. the fact that I haven't played in such a while. But I would certainly love to get back into that. That would be a great just passing time right there. I don't know why. I maybe think come downstairs. I haven't played trumpet since high school. It's been so many years. Yeah, high... Freshman and year of college, actually, for me. But I in high school, I played trumpet, flute, clarinet, and saxophone. Jesus. I if I get Dang. bored, I want to learn another instrument. That was my hobby in high school. Hey, no, that's I think that's great picking up on different instruments because that just. I mean, I don't know how you would necessarily do that within your class, though. Like, oh, I did. Different well, songs, the... I would play different instruments. Oh, so you would sh switch out after every song or something like that? Depending, even during, like, a concert? Depending on what was needed for the song. Like, I played alto clarinet for a couple of songs. I played, um... Okay. Flute was more at home, but I just did for myself. And oh. once you figure out flute, figuring out saxophone is really easy, because it's basically the same fingerings for both. So... Right. Um, well, I, fi I find it funny because I think you would think a clarinet and a saxophone are more relatively related in the sense yeah. that they're both one reed instruments, but two, they have, you know, you've got to put your fingers on. I mean, they're close, well. but not exact. Yeah. But my favorite will always be trumpet. That is. Mm -hmm. And mellophone. I love the sound of a mellophone. It is just a hmm. nice sound to it. Never, never had the option of a mellophone. I mean, there was always like trumpets. Uh, well, uh, I got to play trombones. I got to play mellophone in drum and bugle corps. That was um, something that most people do oh, over the summer. Nice. And I, the first year, I played baritone, and you had a marching baritone, and that was heavy. I came back with muscles, man. It was yeah. so heavy. And then the second year, I did mellophone, and I absolutely loved it. You came back super tan because you were outside all day long. Nice. Hmm. That's pretty That's pretty cool. So. That was a great I experience. Would, I played, yeah, I played trumpet, and that was really the only instrument I ever picked up. Um, but then I also, I did play, like, baritone one year for, like, solo ensemble in high school, mm -hmm. um, which was actually a pretty cool experience. Yeah. Led to some random things, but it was... Uh, I, I did love the experience at the end of it, so it was very, very fun. And being able to, you know, sticking within the brass kind of family, um, it was just great overall. So, highly recommend it. Um, so, what's something you wouldn't want to pick up on that just doesn't look attractive at all within this list? Because Origami. Yeah. 
I'm you sorry. just jump right on that? Why, guys? Why are you jumping on the origami so, like, train so fast rather I than, like, tried. puzzles or something? I love puzzles. Puzzles are awesome. I tried. I had a book of origami stuff in high school, and I got so mad at it, I threw it out my window. I was done. I They're like, fold it this way. And I'm like, how? The paper's this big. No. I... No. No. Are you are you I trying to tell me that you can't do it because you have I bigger can't. hands? My hands really aren't that big. <laughs> show me your hands, Jared. Come on. Show me your hands. Let's show hands. I got I got chubby fingers. So do I. Yeah. That's why I can't play guitar. It pisses me off. <laughs> what? You don't take like a little pick and go ding 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 I think he's talking about like on the neck of it. The cords. Yeah. yeah, on the ne- on the neck of the yeah, the strings. You can't necessarily get the cords and I agree. It is very difficult. Heck, I just don't have the prowess of uh being able to play guitar anyways, because Guitar Hero, I didn't have the capability of sliding my finger down. I couldn't like necessarily do hard or expert mode because I couldn't move my finger down to the orange button fast enough. See, I liked the rock band version because I'd played the drum in those and I was awesome at it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> God, you guys are so. Was a oh. list. You guys are so. Oh, I don't know. I can't believe you guys jump on the origami train so fast. You wouldn't even look at like the other options again of like maybe doing reading. Okay, I know you are. Oh, I know you both already love reading in a sense. But what about blogging? Why wouldn't you? No, like... because that's kind of. I like creative writing, and I could definitely get into that. Yeah, me too. Okay, fine. That's fair. Fair, 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 fair. I would I would have to say blogging is the thing I couldn't, that I would maybe make as a last thing I would want to do. Um, only, I mean, you know, honestly, origami is just right above it, though. <laughs> so, I mean, you get it. Maybe you are yelling I, at us. I, I have, but you guys are just like, Least favorite thing, origami. I, we, Not even we like l- what was what was the rest of it. Hey, no, I get it. Being honest <laughs> is a good thing. Uh, no, but blogging. As much as I love to be creative writing, I loved it in high school. I love you know. I don't do it enough. Where I would honestly want to make it a passing time thing or a hobby for myself. Um, not to mention, this is my hobby right now. This is my passion project. Uh, so it's. I mean, technically, this kind of could be like video blogging. You're not writing. You're just that's called a vlog. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> so okay. I mean, smack myself across the face for that one. But blogging is just writing, right? I there's just not enough time in the day to do everything. There's not. <laughs> I mean, most of my hobbies nowadays are reading. Like last year, because I have Kindle Unlimited, which is a godsend. Mm. I read over 150 or 60 books in last year alone. And then on top of it, I also crochet, which is, I love doing. I do it while I'm working, while I'm on the phone talking to people because it helps. I have ADHD, so it helps keep me focused. Yeah. It does. I mean, I've certainly seen her do it once or twice while we just... (laughs) Yeah. Well, when we try to break up our day a little bit, we just talk a little bit, so. And she might just be sitting there croqueting or crocheting okay. away. I want to call it croqueting. It's a game, though. That's a sport Not outside. A phone. <laughs> croqueting away. <laughs> Four! Hey, look, a cat! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Ooh, crocheting. But yeah, no, um. I do, like I said, I do enough video games as it is. So that's kind of like a hobby on its own, Mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, But no, definitely would probably avoid getting into blogging just because I don't want to necessarily take an additional time to write up things and all of a sudden try to remember why I was writing it up in the first place or writing about it in the first place. So. I get it. Yeah, I mean, I I understand where you're coming from. It's just that you know with her crocheting uh during phone calls and meetings and stuff i always just wrote stuff like wrote either short stories or just Mm. thoughts i don't know 
And then, you know, all the time I spent in college creative writing, I took so many freaking creative writing classes. It's a joke. But I actually, it, it was cathartic. It was kind of enjoying to just sit there mm -hmm. and write what's in your head, even though some of it might be, you know, a little weird, but I don't know. It's Just getting the thoughts out of If anything head, on this list, origami would be the worst. It would. It, 100%. Agreed. That's fair. That's fair. I will give. I will give it to you. It was just kind of, like I said, it was very interesting watching you guys both just go origami. No, no second thoughts about it. No regrets. No nothing. You're just like, get that origami out of my life. <laughs> it's probably our ADHD. It probably. I mean, it's hard to focus on crap like that. I think it would definitely be very hard uh, to get into, especially like Shante, you mentioned <laughs> looking at the book back when you were younger, trying to do it. It's like, how do you want me to fold it even more? <laughs> I would get so mad. My mom would hear me yelling in my room, like, why don't you work? And she'd be like, why don't you just get rid of it? I'm like, I'm going to set it on fire. She's like, no fire. I'm like, why not? <laughs> I set a garbage can on fire a, a while back in my room. I used to, that when was I was fun. in school... I used to, when my sister would make me mad, because she's eight years younger than me, so my mom, of course, you know, had the rule of, you can't physically fight your siblings, you're bigger than them. So, you know, makes hmm. sense. <laughs> I would steal her Barbie dolls and set them on fire in our fire pit in the backyard. And then Dang. And then wait for her to notice. Brutal. And then wait for her to notice. Yeah. I was... Or because my so sister's you left really clumsy, and I would move everything in her room an inch one direction and then all you'd hear as she'd walk into her room is ow ow because she's bumping into everything and i'd be sitting on the couch next to my mom reading just giggling to myself and she's like you're a horrible person oh my god you are you were such a brutal sister it gave Ooh, don't piss her off it's so, the little stuff that's what, yeah that's what counts so did you leave <laughs> evidence behind that you burned her barbie dolls no they would just disappear oh. one day, and she'd be like, I can't find it. My mom would just stare at me. <laughs> okay. I, they, I had do to they ask. burn burn, or do they melt? They, well, they melt. The hair burns, but the rest of oh, it yeah. melts. I was just curious and if you've managed to leave some evidence, like make a paper trail or some sort of like leave some cookie crumbs to be like, here's they... your, your Barbie went. <laughs> <laughs> The only, like, evidence that would be left would be, like, the melted plastic. And my dad's like, well, what is that in there? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, guys, don't pick up on that as a hobby. That's not a very good hobby, obviously. Good um, it's just not a very sibling, a very nice sibling thing to do. <laughs> but, ha, burning things aside, <laughs> I think, no, those are some... This list overall is great. Um, so if, you know, you guys, obviously these are opinions, right? But find time to do hobbies too. <laughs> find your time. I mean, like Shantae said, she's sitting there croquet, not Croc croquet, crocheting. God, those words are so close. <laughs> so <laughs> freaking close, but they're completely, they are too. Okay, there's an CH in one of them. Okay, I'm sorry. Every time I'm gonna go to crochet, that's I'm just gonna think of you saying croquet. She's gonna have a mallet and balls in her head. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, no, <laughs> crocheting. Every time she's gonna crochet, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna think about this episode now. Every time, every time too, because obviously. When I watch her crochet at work and while yeah, we'll working or just talking. We'll be talking about one of the accounts and then I'm just sitting there. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm crocheting. <laughs> I just lift up no, my No, I'm croqueting. Duh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She's going she's, she's gonna to throw some hate at me and be like, <coughs> I'm croqueting. I Duh. <laughs> I definitely will. Yeah. I, I know it. It's not, it's not really even hate. Make? Um, I've, I made all of my kids, um, scarves this year and I'm actually working on nice. a blanket right now. <sighs> so awesome. Yeah. Uh, those are pretty cool. <coughs> so. Woof. 
I got two more blankets yeah. to make, but you know, can't just make one. Kid, you make any hats? I have. It's been. A Do few you have years like a step by step guide for that too? Um, I mean, I usually if it's like a new stitch, because there's a bunch of different types of stitches between that that are in crocheting. Okay. So. Um, if it's a new stitch that I'm learning, then I'll look up, like, a tutorial for it. But um, it's really easy to pick up, and there's a lot of really good YouTube, like, tutorials on it. Right. So would would you say crocheting is also, mm, like, a DIY thing? I guess it or could be, it... yeah. I mean... Because a lot of times... I guess if we looking... look at... Because you can make hats, gloves, scarves blankets um you can make pants sweatshirts sh just regular shirts it you can make a lot of stuff with it true so god i'd love to i'm just looking at some of the like making something with your own hands a hobby here and <coughs> stretching you know stretching those skills right that's why that's why i asked because it's like here they provide like a list of things you could do like right. make a bench or uh, make a bench for your balcony a rustic book bookcase, maybe a treehouse for your kids, like in their own bedroom. So, if you, I've I've seen some very crazy videos like that though, uh, off of like TikTok or just random videos on YouTube where people are making a bet like a treehouse or something like that that still manages to fit in these their kids' bedroom. I'm like, damn, like an inside jungle gym. My even. kids would absolutely throw each other off of it i would not okay well that's what I happens when you have it. <laughs> i don't know this thing looks really well built though from that and it's just like the time can... on this guy's hands is amazing it can be well built my kids will find a way to throw each other off of it oh well, and then... my kids will try to find a way to take it apart mine would too especially would the expect oldest that out she of gets older mad. kids I would expect that out of older kids, but like a four-year-old, really? Oh, my little a brother, four -year -old girl. My little brother, when he was four, used to take the tire, used to take the lug nuts off of people's trucks if he didn't like their truck. Why were your parents giving him a tool to do that? Oh, he just walked around with tools. He really liked them when he was little. <laughs> I love you, mom. Love Jeez. You too. Oh, that's funny. Uh, that that's just funny that your brother would actually go around with tools and just like no nah, I don't like your truck. <laughs> Except he Sorry. really cuz my family's more of a Ford family that I grew up in. So my bro little brother used to run around yelling "Ucky Chevy" and then take their lunch box. <laughs> Ucky Chevy. I Can I have this. your brother's phone number? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you in the same boat? You think Chevys are Ucky? I wouldn't buy a Chevy if my life depended on it. Mm, they're Fair not enough. great. They break really easily. Everybody's got their own opinions, though. I'm not saying I'm a Chevy person by any means, but I'm also not a Ford person. I've had I bad experiences with Ford. And that's been working really great. Yeah. I've just had bad experience with Ford dealerships. Um, so it's turned me away from Ford in general, but... To yeah. your point, I mean, the building your stuff with your hands, that is very attractive in my mind. Uh, woodworking, uh, especially welding. I wish I could weld. I would be a very happy man if I could build my own go-kart or just my own car repairs with a welding you mm -hmm. know, apparatus. And then also, I know this is not a manly thing to say, but sewing. I took sewing in middle school, and I forgot all I learned, but There's I have nothing... stuff around the house that needs fixing. Ah, I wish I could sew. My There's mom nothing wrong with yeah, wanting to sew. On there. My mom made this blanket for me with her sewing machine. It. It's so boring. So, would you? But would you rather be able to sew it by hand or use a sewing machine? Both. Both having both, both skills both. would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can fair, fair. I can sew by hand. The sewing machine gets me still because I'm like, why is this not going straight? I pushed it straight, mm. but it didn't stay straight. I get it's really not, bad at it. I'll <laughs> I'll feed it straight, but for some reason it just keeps going off. It's like Pretty great much. now I got to start all over or something. 
No, I think I think having that sewing or having sewing as a skill would be great. Uh, there, by no means, is there any shame of being a man and wanting to sew. I think it. I never understood. It can come why... in very very handy. Somebody's got. I think somebody should know it. I hate I hate having to rely on other people to sew my stuff when there's a rip in it because now all of a sudden I have to do without it. Not not like I'm saying. Not by any means am I going to be out of some sort of clothing or piece of or article of clothing because I had to hand this off. Right. But it's like now I don't have it at the time I may need it where I could be running low or they're my favorite pants to wear or my pajama pants or something. So, yeah. <laughs> I never understood like why it was so stigmatized for men to learn how to like sew or crochet. I don't get it. Generations of men, you know, who... I don't know. It it goes back a long time. And, you know, as we break down gender barriers in this modern world, I think it's less and less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. It's just always been like, all right, well, like you said, the 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 barriers that were up there before, uh, it's kind of really sticking. I think the big thing that people really look at it now is, like, it was a tradition, in yeah. a sense. Or traditional values yeah. was the the woman of the house would actually be the one doing the cooking, the sewing, like kind of those types of things. Whereas would the man be would do considered domestic. Yeah. And then obviously more, uh, the man, the men thing or the stronger thing would be passed on to the man. So doing some of the, uh, I guess yard work or building, if they did build a, a freaking garage or, um, whatever you know for a tree house things like that so and not to mention the dad was at work or the man was at work anyways right he was working eight twelve hours depending on the job making money well it was just a domestic chore <laughs> that's why i'm really thankful for my stepdad because he made sure to teach me how to fix basic things myself He's like, this way you're not impressed by no man. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's funny though because it reminds me. You say that, and it reminds me of like Transformers, the mm -hmm. first Transformers movie, where Megan a Fox lot of guys guy... over Bumblebee he... trying to fix not... it. Yeah, was not it even. I don't or was think... it a different car? But she was leaning uh, over fixing it... one of Sam's cars. It was pretty. I think it was Bumblebee just taking a look at the engine and everything because it was. It was when Bumblebee was truly a piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> like a the the old ass like the, I think it was the sixty seven Camaro or something like that. I think so. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he got insulted and just drove away. Yeah. <laughs> And transformed it, and then just changed his appearance to like a 2019 or something. not even 19. It was like a was 2008 or two something. It it was it was the newest it was the newest Camaro at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, it's it's just kind of funny how you say that. And that's that was my first thought. It's like, oh yeah, well, normally guys hate it when girls know more than them about what's under their hood. It's they like get mad. Like, they legitimately, get they get mad. And if somebody knew more than me, that's fine. Because at that point, it's like, I am gonna, re I can rely on you. I don't have to stress about it then. I've had legitimate arguments with grown men over things that would be considered manly. Because they're like, why do you know this? I'm like, because hmm. I was taught it. Wow. <sighs> so, yeah, I... I kind of want to revisit as you know the the final the final point or thing i want to want you guys to take away here tonight making time for your hobbies is very critical uh because like jared said in the beginning finding ways to prevent yourself from going insane or even worse of worse than going insane i think would probably be stressing yourself out mm -hmm. use these hobbies as a way to de-stress after maybe a hard days of work um or maybe just not so much a hard days of work, but just long, long activities you've done outside of your house. So if you do go outside, maybe visit family members or something, 
come home and find that way to do that. So I think taking up something you know you're going to be able to do. Yep. But also make sure you plan. Like, if you're going to do DIY projects or something like that, and, like, building a treehouse, make sure you plan enough in advance. Yeah. Uh, time management is going to be critical because you want to make sure you have enough time throughout the day where you're able to maybe take a break, come back, whatnot. But just, I think, making sure you have enough time or just making time for it. Because hobbies are honestly one of the things that are very easy to forget to do yeah. as you all of a sudden become overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But on the side note, don't let your hobby overtake time with your family as well. Because I've seen that happen. Yeah. Very Same, much so. Yeah. Very much so. I mean, I try to do what I can. <laughs> it's it's hard to balance it right now with the new baby and everything. But overall, if you're able to find something and making sure you're still balancing your family time and your personal time, mm -hmm. I think you'll be pretty well off. And it, it may not be easy at first, but eventually after a while, you'll be able to fine tune it. The one thing so, I found... And then I think that... One, one point. Yep. Go ahead. I was going to say, the one thing I found, like, when my kids were younger is when I'd want to take, like, that personal time for myself, I always felt guilty because I'm like, well, I'm the mom. I'm supposed to be doing mom things. And just remember, not you, you still deserve time for yourself as well. You're still a person. Like, you can't help them be happy if you're not happy yourself doing something that makes you happy. Yeah. Agreed. Totally get it. Totally get it. Jared? Yeah. Uh, I, I feel yeah, I feel you on that because it's just like, I don't want to be selfish, mm -hmm. but you need to be. Sometimes, yeah. You need time for yourself. I mean, yeah, it, you can understand and, and, you know, that you're a parent, but, you ha you know, you're still you at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but then also one thing that I need to keep in mind too is that once your hobby becomes stressful, it's no longer fun and it's no longer a hobby mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's an added point in your life that's Cognitive. bringing you frustration. Yeah. And then it just loses all point because a hobby is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to help you relax. It's supposed to help you release your creative energies. <laughs> Don't stress out about it. Also, don't overwhelm yourself with too many hobbies. I've done that. Yeah. With my ADHD myth. <laughs> so, how, so how many hobbies do you think would be ideal then for a, a new parent at that point? Um, and I, 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 I'll say, I say new parent being like, for let's say you have a newborn or you start dating a another like a single parent. And then you do become invested in their child's life. Um, and that's, you know, one thing that they really like about you, obviously. Mm -hmm. So how, how many hobbies would you say would be ideal for your, like for somebody maybe just starting off? I mean, I guess it would depend on the situation. Um, like with my oldest, she was a very scheduled baby. She, she was every four hours. And I love that about her. So I was still able to do my reading and crocheting when I wasn't trying to sleep when she was sleeping and um, taking care of like basic household things. So that was fairly easy for me. I, when all my kids were young, I stuck to, for the most part, I read the most when they were the youngest because it was the easiest to pick up and go. Where mm -hmm. crocheting, you have, you're using both your hands and you're flipping things around and figured it, it was easier as I got older. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, and for especially when you have that that one year old or younger child, you can't you have to have something where you're not going to be you, where you can't just put it down. Like a book, you can kind of just put a bookmark in it and kind of memorize where you were in your spot. But like thing worth crocheting, you gotta you know kind of un you know I don't know I've never crocheted in my life, but I would imagine you can't just put it down, right? Um, it depends on where you are. Uh, what's what I usually do. Yeah, see, that's, yeah. Like, right now, I'm, like, right in the middle, and where'd it go? What I do is I pull, like, a really big loop out so that the yarn doesn't get lost. And it doesn't undo okay. the Art. stitches that I've already done. So, I find that works really well. Um, some people mm -hmm. have, um, 
where is it? I have it. Stitch markers. They'll use to do like the oh, last one. Yeah. Oh, nice. And for those of you that are just audio only, she was holding up a nice little like yellow stitch marker. Um, that really helps you find your place. It does. You, what I use them for is I usually mark the two ends of where it starts and ends for the row. And then it helps me keep count. Because oh, depending nice. on the pattern that you're using, you have to have a certain amount of stitches for it to work. So. Okay. Hmm. Nice. JJ, what do you think? What how, what ages and what hobbies? How many hobbies? Uh, God. That's why I wanted to ask you guys. Um, I feel like I, <laughs> I'm i probably on the guy. Pro- I feel like I'm one that tries to maybe have too many hobbies right now, even though it doesn't feel like it. Or maybe I just have the wrong hobby, which is video games and streaming. Um, because, know, you know, my kids are still young thing. enough where they want the attention. Um, and I think it's very difficult right now in that sense where uh, there is never almost a good time for my hobby at this point. I mean, I used to be really big into MMOs. Like, War, World of Warcraft was my thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, what I, I used to do, because I have to be very careful when playing games like that because I will get sucked in and everything else around me will disappear. Yep. Um, what... Because my husband was would also play, too. What we did is, after the kids would go to bed, we would play for a couple of hours. And then we would, after that allotted time that we would have, we would get off. Otherwise, we would have stayed up until the next morning, and then we'd both be, like, just a bag of shit for the next day. <laughs> yeah, so. that's, my, that's my big problem, too, is I, that's what I try to do, is make sure I'm doing it around after the kids go to bed. <laughs> um, and then not stay up too late. Because I normally, like, if I if I do play video games and then start streaming, it'll be around 9.30-ish, mm-hmm. uh, which is what my normal schedule would be. And then it'd probably be about uh, around 11.30, 12 o'clock. But sometimes it'd be about 1 o'clock in the morning See, that I would all I of a sudden get, be done. And then right. want to then go upstairs and then get ready first. Then sleep and be up the next morning for work. Because I was doing it during work week, too. Not just weekends. My normal bedtime is about midnight so and what's nice is my kids are older now so a lot of times they want to go do their own thing which i'm all happy for sometimes i'm kind of like we're gonna spend time together and they're like ew no and i'm like i don't care (laughs) fair yeah that's fair that's very fair so we're gonna sit on this damn couch (laughs) we're gonna watch a movie mother whether you like it or not (laughs) and we're gonna watch a movie the the hardest part is finding a movie that all three of the kids will agree on. Oh no, you just you just pick the movie. They don't have any say in it. No, I won't do that because they'll complain. So I let them argue amongst themselves. I'll give them three options and I'm like, pick between these three. Yep. And then once that debate is done, I'm like, All right, this is what it is. We'll watch one of the one of the other ones next time. Fair. So That's it fair. might be an hour debate sometimes, but you know, we get to a a solution <laughs> that's family time though a debate is still family time yeah you're you're bonding through debating of what to watch and why to watch it <laughs> as i sit there like this the entire time like how is it this hard of a decision <laughs> that's where you just walk away and go start cooking or something no i have to referee oh yeah oh, that's right yeah i mean okay there but, some of the children have been known to plot um, their uh, the other child's demise all of them. They all plot each other. Well, See? Exactly. The, the oldest and then the oldest of the twins. Those two are so much alike. And they're very much, they'll argue and they'll just keep going. And then all of a sudden it just reaches the boiling point where I have to step in or they start swinging on each other. Mm. Uh-oh. And then I'm just like. I hope my kids never get that way. And then the, the youngest of the twins, she will plot your demise for months. And she will get you once you forgot what you have done. <laughs> that's the worst part that's the she, worst feeling ever that's crazy <laughs> and like i saw it happen and i went because i forgot what happened i was like what was that for and she goes this two months ago and i'm like oh god <laughs> 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 no <laughs> oh god oh god it's... that's terrible that's terrible so 
any any last things i mean about finding time to do the hobbies or I th- like i said i think maybe if you want to start one I, well, I haven't necessarily given an answer but one would definitely be the ideal thing to start with yes making sure you're able to build the time for yourself there and if you want to start adding hobbies down the road <coughs> do it one at a time make sure you're not overstressing uh or and make sure it's something that doesn't time management going exactly exactly so any any other closing or thoughts about that? No, I think I'm good. I've I've said you know said what I needed to say about it, and just it, you know if worst case scenario, just tell your family you need to take this Sunday this afternoon and commit some time to your hobby, yeah. like right. I did today with my basement project. Nice. Glad to hear you're doing your basement yeah. project. So I got to start doing that again. But that won't, my basement project won't start happening until probably next year and whatnot. Um, giving, getting my wife back to work is really crucial at this point. So yeah, she's taking full time off, which is nice. But yeah. So find something that, you know, overall is attractive to you. Uh, avoid anything that doesn't seem attractive when picking out a hobby. But then. Lastly, find the time, make the time, uh, and don't stress about it. And don't feel so, bad about and taking the time. Don't, yeah, never feel bad. If you start feeling bad, then obviously that's not the right hobby to get into. Um, or you are probably still, I, I'll call it this way, a virgin parent at that point, where you feel that it's always kids that need to be you need to take care of i mean you do need to take care of them yeah. but you uh, you're now just devoting all your time to them and not devoting or not trying to refresh yourself through your own hobbies or just getting away for a little bit so your, do that your break during the day should not be the time that you shower you should have other breaks besides that exactly exactly so who wants to hear some jokes I do. I do. You do? Because I, guys, I used to like origami, but I gave up as there was too much paperwork. I thought there was going to be like a folding joke. Like I just had to fold it. I had to, I had to fold it up and put it away. <laughs> that'll be with that. That'll be when we talk about poker. Uh, <coughs> so did you did you hear about did you hear about the skydiving club that closed? The members kept falling out. Jesus. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I had an art contest with my friend. Yeah? It ended in a draw. <laughs> Last one. I had to give up my photography hobby. I kept losing focus. Oh, my God. <laughs> As a person who sucks at taking pictures, because of that main reason, that's funny. <laughs> well, guys, I do want to say this. It's been a pleasure. Shante, thank you very much for coming on and being the guest tonight and talking with us about hobbies for dads, yes, moms alike. Um, very much to have a mother's perspective as well, um, being able to hit that up. Guys, you know where to find us. If you have any questions, comments, tell us how we're doing Email us at leashdads14 at gmail.com. You can also do the poll that's on Spotify if you listen via Spotify. Uh, we are on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Anchor FM, YouTube as well. So you will be able to see our wonderful faces on YouTube once that's always uploaded. Look out for that. Other than that, as always, thank you again. Have a good night.